Hello, we're going to start this chunk of videos looking at networking by talking about the difference between a peer-to-peer -peer and a client-server network. So before we do, let's just define what a network is. So a network consists of the connections between devices which enable resources and data to be shared. So, you know, here's a picture of a very simple network, what we, what we might call a bus network. We've got uh, five computers, we've got one server, which is a computer, I should say, so we've got five workstations, one server, and one printer. The blue lines are our connections between the two. They could be wires, they could also be like a wireless connection. So the idea is, you know, a network is there because often communication is much faster and easier when we use a network, right? Before networks were invented, to send information long distance, you'd have to use letters and physical messengers and slower methods than just sending an email or using the internet. Even in, say, a building, right, being able to email someone or send a quick message is often quicker than you walking down to see them. And also, that point in my definition about resources and data being shared often leads to a more efficient use of resources. Right, in this network, we've got one printer and one server. The fact that you've got a network means that you can share those resources between our five workstations. If you didn't have a network, you'd have to have, say, five printers or five servers doing the same job, just one for each computer, clearly that's not nearly as efficient. It's much more wasteful. Now just to play both sides and give some quick disadvantages to networks, well, part of the issue can be the networks are quite fixed. You can't always easily change their setup depending on what technology you're using. So you know the classic is loads and loads of wires everywhere. It suddenly becomes very messy and hard to change. But also networks are not straightforward always they can be quite expensive and difficult to set up. So you might need certain expertise. You might need to hire specialist network engineers or network technicians to help you run the network. So I'm giving negatives only because often an exam question might ask you for both sides and I don't want it to throw you. Okay, but networks are generally, of course, a good thing. Now to go through two types of network, and we're gonna go through loads of types in the next few videos. But these two are based on the behavior. So how does the network behave? Starting with um, a client-server network. So a client-server network, we've got clients and we've got servers. Well, what are those? So a client in this context is a device or software which requests data from servers. And servers are the flip side, they provide the data to clients. So it's a bit of a circular definition because Clients require servers, servers require clients. They're both needed to be able to function. And so in a client-server network, every device in the network is acting as either a client or a server in usually quite a permanent way. So you've got a dedicated server, you've got your other devices being clients. Usually you have one server and many clients. If it's a massive network, you might have quite a few servers, but still the number of clients will usually massively outweigh the number of servers, because servers tend to be much more powerful, but not necessarily. Now, why might a client-server network be chosen? Well, the main thing is, and the main feature of them is you've got that centralized control. The network is controlled by the server or servers. If you want to change some data or change the service they're providing or change wherever it is, all you need to do is change it on the server and it will affect all of the clients. So if you are running that server, you've now got control over what is provided to those clients. It means things like security can be managed. If you are, say, having a, a file server and all of your employees are logging on to your server to access their files, you can make sure the security is good when storing those files. You might also have a backup. You could backup centrally. That's a really common use of servers. But the point is you've got one server or a couple of servers which are really running the network and you are in control of those. Now, from a client's perspective, that could be a good or bad thing, right? The client might find that actually the server is slow or has got bad security or doesn't back up properly. But in theory, having that control is often desirable. But servers, because they tend to be quite powerful and quite specialized, can be quite expensive to run and also quite difficult to run. Again, you might need to hire specialist staff to help you run the server. If you've got a big network, and lots of clients, your server might get really slow as it responds to lots and lots of requests. 
And of course, if that server goes down and you haven't got a backup server, all of the clients will be affected by it not working anymore. Now most networks are client server networks, but there are also a different type of network called a peer-to-peer -peer network. And these have no central dedicated servers. So the network doesn't have a, a big computer working to provide data all the time. Instead, individual devices are able to switch back and forth between being clients and servers. So you can't be both at the same time, but they can switch between themselves. And this is managed on their own. So each computer has its own job, it is in control, each computer has equal responsibility. In a client server network, the servers are in charge, they've got the most responsibility, but here the individual computers are equal. So no, nothing is running it apart from the computers individually. So this is simple to set up and maintain. You don't need to set up a, a fancy server, you just can set up between the devices. But because there is no centralized control, there is no consistent managed security or backups, each individual device can make sure it's got good security and take backups, but there is no guarantee that is going to happen. So for instance, malware can spread quite quickly between peer-to-peer -peer networks because you can't guarantee your peer is keeping things as safe as you might be. In the past, these have been used to share things illegally because there is no one ultimately responsible. So you might share illegal movies or illegal music downloads between the computers because nobody is in control. So peer-to-peer -peer networks are useful and things like blockchain and Bitcoin are peer-to-peer -peer networks. So they're not necessarily bad, but the lack of control can be quite off-putting to many businesses.